Well, folks, we have a two for one for you today with this K-Bar setup. This today we're looking at is a system that you purchase separately, but you can absolutely deploy together and was really designed to work in unity together. We have the Jaraz Choppa. This is the big chopping tool that we're gonna be taking a look at today, see how it performs, splitting, chopping, hacking, carving, all that type of stuff with this large setup, this new uh, designer that K-Bar has recently picked up, love the Turok, which is kind of the middle knife between this system, and uh, have loved that. So we're really looking forward to see what this knife has to offer in unison with its smaller companion buddy. Its partner, the Globe Trotter. This little compact fixed blade is designed to either be used on its own or to literally ride piggyback, as you just saw a moment ago, on the choppa and be used for all of the finer detail work. So we're gonna run both of these together in a systems video together, see if this is a good system to possibly pick up if you're into large choppers and small compact fixed blades. So let's go ahead, see what these two guys can do together and produce for us. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Globe Trotter and its blade performance. What we're looking at is 1095 Crovan high carbon steel. Been using that steel for years from K-Bar, love it. It's a great field steel, easy to tune up in the field. It is pretty pressed, uh, rust prone, uh, so it will rust on you. So if you're in high humid environments, but they have done a slick black coating, which I really prefer on my blades um, versus like Rhino liner type of stuff uh, on this design. So it's gonna slide through the material and not feel like you're going through it with leaving a bunch of gunk. Now from the handle to the tip, three and a half inches, actual cutting edge, three and a quarter inches, saber grind with a mild swedge there, giving you a very strong but precise tip and it's gonna be full tang obviously with a maximum thickness back here of 0.17 coming in at five and a half ounces. So some of these things initially I was like, I don't know how I feel about this, but then I really began to think about the real concept of this knife and that's where we're gonna change into more concept here uh, as we are rolling in a bunch of footage so you can see what this thing can do is that uh, the name gives it away. This is designed to go anywhere in the world and not have to worry about knife laws, which is nice that it's kind of thought out in that way that you can go anywhere, you know, if there are blade restrictions, it's usually gonna come underneath those blade restrictions. You know, some company, uh, some countries have massive, you know, folding laws where they have to have slip joint or you can't have it over this. And you know, the, the folding knife arena is really tight, but they're willing to slack it off for quote unquote, like hunting knives and that type of thing where this would fall into. So you can carry this around the world and not worry about um, the, the repercussions of carrying it. Obviously always follow your local knife laws no matter where you are in the world. But this is not designed as a neck knife. It's designed for a belt carry or modular carry on rigs and that type of thing versus like the SE Izula 2. You can see here, this is much smaller. The handle scales are way blockier, they're shorter. This is just nowhere near gonna give me the amount of performance that this guy is going to give me. And so really it is designed as a compact survival knife because it's really thick, it's overly thick. You know, it's a little bit uh, heavy on the heavy side of knives in this size range. And normally, I mean, I think this guy comes in like at six, the BK-16, you know, it's a much larger knife uh, and it's gonna be thinner than the um, a globe trotter, But the concept, and that's where you need to know about the concept, this is not designed to carry around your neck. You guys know how I feel about neck knives. If you carry neck knives and it works in your system, awesome, rock on, keep doing it. But for me, it does not work. I don't like carrying my knives on my neck and around my neck. And this knife was not designed to do that. It was designed to ride on your belt or on your you know gear and give you the capabilities of a much larger you know survival knife something like this or even bigger, but fulfill the blade lengths that may be required around the world. And so what that means is this is not a razor blade. It's not gonna be the best slicer in the compact fixed world that you will ever meet. It can do a good job, but it's designed to be overbuilt and be able to give you more handle ergonomics than you're gonna find on almost any other knife and give you great strength and capability. So it'll still do great feather sticks, it'll still do good notching, great for hunting, you know, and skinning, cleaning your fish, you know, whatever you may be doing. 
doing with it, food prep, all of that. Um, but it is on the thicker side of that, and it's not going to be the, the the best, you know, feather sticker on the market. It's not going to be um, the best slicer for food prep on the market because of the saber grind. There are other ones in the size range that will do um, better, but they are usually either going to be way smaller and not as um, capable and not as comfortable to carry, or they're going to be much larger and may not meet all the needs that uh, you may have with blade restrictions around the world. So that is the concept with this knife. And I think for that, really fitting a niche that most knives don't fall into, it has a lot of capability in a lot of different ways and does give you a lot of capability on the finer side that the, that the um, choppa just wouldn't be able to do purely because of size. All right, so performance of the blade on the Choppa. Now again, 1095 Crovan steel, great steel for large blades like this. It's gonna take a lot of abuse. It's gonna be able to flex, it's gonna be able to give. If you damage it, it's usually a roll, so it's very easy for you to tune up. And again, that nice slick coating. K-Bar needs to put this on all their knives and you put it on their Beckers. And if they're doing 1095, this is the coating that I recommend. It's way better than kind of the Rhino liner that you sometimes see on some of their blades. Now the Overall blade length from handle to tip is 9.875 inches. Overall, it's got a thickness of 0.19, so just a hair over 3 16 saber grind. Now you are gonna lose about an inch with that finger trail, so the cutting edge itself is about 8.75 inches overall. Great saber grind, great, just super classic design. And folks, what really came across in the chopping was that the blade is a powerhouse. Destroyed wood, took out chunks better than really any of my other knives that I have right now in this kind of size range that are production knives. You know, better than my SE Hungalus, better even than my BK9. Just the grind angle, we were just in like super impressed, better than full flat grinds that you would maybe see on some other designs that are out there, um, like the Artac 2, you know, uh, things like like that just the way that they have decided to do this and 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 grind this in oh, was dude. phenomenal at the harder chopping task just went through logs bigger than I've ever taken out before with massive chunks being removed with every single connection with the wood. Batoning was a breeze because of the saber grind, the just a hair over 3 16 and the large blade length. You're able to span a lot of logs. So if you needed to split that stuff in winter time or it's just really wet out and you need to get to that um, you know, inner core to dry out so that you can get that fire going and have a good fire in that uh, colder or wetter conditions, it's gonna be able to split that wood no problem. And with no swedges or clips to worry about, it's not gonna damage damage your batoning stick as much as other knives on the market with those clip points. And then the other aspect was the finger choil and just the balance. I was able to do fantastic carving, cutting, and whittling with this knife. The reason is because this comes in at under a pound. This is 15.9 ounces. So at under a pound, I have huge blade length, great finger choil, really well balanced, and you can get your feather sticks, your notches, your carving, your whittling done like a much smaller survival knife. Yeah. And I believe I'm gonna do an actual separate kind of like head-to-head -head video. Uh, you know, this is the SE6. It's my favorite go-to mid-weight survival knife. But this is the thing that as I was processing throughout this video, I really believe as a standalone, you know, we're talking mostly in systems with the, the Globetrotter, but if you were just to buy this knife and you were to take this out and put them head to head, I have a feeling that overall performance because of the balance capability, you're actually gonna get way more use overall with this that you can still do finer cutting tasks that like an SE6 could do, but then you're gonna be able to spawn, uh, span wood to baton and chop more because of the blade length and the slightly heavier, about four ounces heavier overall, that the chop I would give you. So we're actually gonna probably do a separate video. Uh, I will, I'm gonna say it right here. It'll be a couple more weeks, maybe a month or two, but I'm gonna just take these two out, do a total head to head and take talk in concept. How does this knife do as a standalone survival knife where usually I would just put it in the chopper range. You can chop with it, but you're not gonna be able to do any sort of carving or whittling, take a smaller knife. Could you just carry this knife and really get all of the tasks done as a larger do everything survival knife? So let's go ahead and discuss the she's. First off, I'm gonna talk about the little guy, the Globe Trotter here. Uh, I really wish that this had come with a polymer plastic sheath like we've seen on the Turok. That would have made this, I think, a lot more modular. Uh, the nylon that they're using here is decent. There's nothing wrong with it. It's got the PALS webbing on the back to attach to the larger sheath, which is all great. 
but you know it's basically a belt carry or you can kind of you know molly it to something but it's a, it's a large package if they had done a really small you know polymer attachment with like a blade tech lock i think that would have been amazing and given a lot of capability i'm going to send this guy off to get a kydex sheath custom made for it so i'm not quite digging the setup that they decided to go with for the globe trotter but i'm totally cool with what they went with the um uh, choppa because it's a slightly upgraded nylon from the becker bk9 from everything i can tell it has the pals webbing on the front so you can attach pouches and you know smaller knives i mean whatever you want it gives a little bit more versatility i feel than just those little pouches that they've offered in the past on those other knives you got your basic you know snap with the velcro kind of keep it out of the way you know so when you pull it out you're not going to just slice off the the snap and then everything that we know from k-bar on the back pals webbing and then the large attachment here with velcro so you can put it on your belt without taking your belt off so decent nylon sheath you know if this becomes your go-to knife you will eventually want to upgrade to kydex but for you know the market and the price it's uh, actually on the better side of the nylon sheaths that are out there so we're going to start with the price point discussion with the smaller globe trotter these will go between 60 and 65 dollars for usa made high carbon steel uh, it's you know a decent price it's very competitive with what else is out there on the market now we will have links in the description below over to amazon for all of the jaws products that uh, they are producing right now over at k-bar so for about 60 to 65 bucks you are getting that really kind of you know tough durable compact fixed blade that you can take almost anywhere in the world and then on the large choppa we're looking at about a hundred dollars it flows between 95 and a 105 anywhere in there again links in the description below over to amazon that's always a great way to help support the channel but that's going to run you very similar to a lot of the larger sp line from ontario uh, a lot of the other k bars that are out there like the bk9 all of those are going to run within about five dollars of each other so again very competitive for everything that you're seeing in its overall design and makeup so I do want to thank K-Bar for their willingness to send this over to us to test out and review for you guys so that you can see whether or not this is the right system and setup for you. But again, we'll have links in the description below over to Amazon so you guys can check this out if these items connect with you or even if one of these two connect with you. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the ergonomics and really discuss how this works with the multiple grips that you would want to use this knife in. Now, the first part of it, which is the front end with this really nice deep choil here and just the way they contoured in all the front end here, this is extremely ergonomic and allows me to control this large knife better than most other large choppers that I have. This one is just so mobile that you're gonna be able to carve all day with the finger choil with those finer tasks. Now the handle scales themselves are that uh, polymer grivery material. It's got some light texturing on there. Uh, you know, they're pretty slick, just like the BK9 uh, would be um, out of the box. You know, I'd love to see some different handle scale options that K-Bar offers maybe in the future or some companies start doing that. Uh, they did contour it well, you know, giving you valleys and hills throughout here so that when you're holding it back here, it's very contoured, very ergonomic in my hand. So when you're holding your grip like this and you're getting a couple swings in or you're just doing, you know, some finer chopping, you know, some light hacking, that type of stuff, it feels very comfortable, very ergonomic in my large size hands. The one problem I have with this knife is the back end right here by the lanyard and the angles, several different angles that are not machined or contoured, what they do to your hand. Now with the sweep, you know, it's got a little bit to grab onto there. So like I do for like the last year and a half, ever since I saw this lanyard first deployed, I deploy it in such a way that I put my thumb through here, wrap it around, and now we're good to go. And this knife is never going to go out of my hand. So I was like, not a big deal at all that there's no hook or anything. Let's get to town and start chopping. And we destroyed wood. I mean, the saber grind, as we discussed, is monstrous in its power. The problem is because of all these sharp angles and the gap and just all the way, the way it was designed, it was also, as it was destroying wood, destroying my hand, creating huge hot spots. And it was basically jamming the palm of my hand right here back up in it and just eating away at my hand, just causing so much pain that after we went through a couple of logs, I was like, dude, I'm done. My hand aches. Ah, biting in back there. Ha ha! The camera guy has it. <laughs> 
That's what it was, dude. Because of that. So uh, then, which is really just disappointing, and it's all because of just the ergonomics. Now you could take, you know, some sandpaper and you know maybe a sander, belt sander or something, and try and you know round these off, and that may take away that problem. I always look at stuff from out of the box, you know, I don't, without modding really anything is what I try to do whenever possible. So I went to. Um, the old style where you just stick your hand through a lanyard and just kind of, you know, wrap it around a bunch of times to kind of give it there, you know, some, some resistance, if you will. And so I was able to do a lot better with the chopping without any pain. Now, because of this system and there's no hook off the back, after about, you know, five to eight swings, you're back here and then you got to re-grip and grab the knife again and keep going. So that was um, disappointing. It was, you know, I, I really was hoping to get a lot more um, comfortability out of the design because the, the grind is insane and the chopping capability is insane. But really to me, it was kind of like looking at a Mustang. And you know, if you think about the old Mustangs, the, the old versions, you know, they came with the 289 engine V8, you know, that was good, but a little bit later on, they had the ability that you could do a 302 engine and get a lot more power out of that thing. This has the potential for huge amount of power but it's hindered for some of that capability and consistent chopping all day long without any sort of pain because of some of the issues that I'm having back here with just the angles. That's all it is, it's just sharp um, transitions instead of smooth rounded transitions in the back here limit its overall capability. Is it still a decent chopper? Absolutely. Is it my top chopper? No, it's not because of those ergonomic issues back here and me constantly having to regrip and I can't do the lanyard deployment that I wish that would keep it there all day without destroying the, the, the hand and hurting and causing pain in my hand. Now for the Globe Trotter, we've got some great ergonomics. I love the contouring. It's not squared off or blocky at all. Fits my large size hands really well. I got plenty on the back end there. Even with the, the angle that it's going at, I'm able to grab it without any coming off. I feel like I have great control over it, no hot spots. I can hold it all day long. I've even got a pretty decent guard right here. So if I did have to do some stabbing or just really aggressive cutting like through rubber that you've seen in some of this video, you know, or something like that, I'm able to be really locked into place and it's very comfortable. And so for this size of knife of being like, you know, three and a quarter cutting edge, it's, I would say probably in recent memory, the best ergonomic, you know, handle in this size range. It's very large and very ergonomic. So all, all of us, regardless of your hand size, are going to enjoy holding this knife for an extended period of time without it getting blocky or feeling like, you know, you're just kind of holding on to the back end of this little tiny fixed blade. You have this really good large handle that's going to give you a lot of ergonomic capability without fatiguing your hand. So let's go ahead and wrap this up and give you my final thoughts on this system and kind of also how these stand alone. As a system, I think that particularly the Globe Trotter is amazing and you're gonna get a lot of that smaller, finer work done, food prep around your you know, campsite, whatever it may be, you know, triggers, traps, all that. And at the same time, you're able to do that with a much larger instrument that's gonna be able to split, baton, and I would say do medium hacking tasks, you know, that you are doing more like the branches and everything that we've discussed. Not so much like, yeah, I'm gonna go chop down five trees right now. Um, that was is where this knife, I believe, it would be you'd be better suited to either have a saw with you or have like a designated hatchet or something like that for the long extended chopping tasks that you may be looking for. But this is the best that I've can remember and that I've, you know, in, in recent memory used when it comes to the, um, not only the power, and again, if the ergonomics was slightly different on the back end, that would be phenomenal. Um, but also the controllability on the front end of the knife for your medium cutting tasks, carving, whittling, all that. I mean, it's just insane how um, easy this system works for that type of thing. So I wanna thank you guys for coming over today. I hope this video has helped you out decide whether or not the Choppa and the Globe Trotter are the right knives to deploy in your systems or if one or the other are better for you. Uh, that's what this video is all about. That's why we go out here and make videos just like this to help you guys make the right decision. Is this the right product to put in my systems that are gonna give me the most bang for buck and give me the most joy and uh, performance. So thank you so much guys. Check us out on all the relevant social media as well. It's a great way to see what's up and coming. Uh, check us out on on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. Any questions you have, I'll answer in the comments below. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.